Hello and welcome to another episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I have a very interesting guest. So this is another carbon in disguise, as I like to call them, and this is the T14S. Now the T14S holds an interesting place in my heart, and it's because when I was originally looking back in 2020, purchasing my next laptop, the T14S for a time was on my short list. However, there was a lot to know about the T14 and the T14S Gen 1. You see, there are two major categories of the T14S, and today we have the Intel variant, but if I had it, I would put the AMD variant over here as well. And that's where things get particularly interesting because there were significant differences between the offerings of the Intel and the AMD variants. And that is one of the things that I would primarily like to focus on to start us off today. So first things first, 2020 the release of the new T-Series, the new TS-Series, the X1 Nano. It was a busy year for ThinkPad, I remember it quite well. The claim to fame uh, for these new TS-Series was, of course, a carbon fiber top and then a magnesium alloy hybrid bottom, and you'll see the branding on the underside. And we need to dive right into the differences and similarities between the two offerings. First off, the Intel model, this one right here, was offered in both silver and in black, whereas the AMD model was only offered in black. The AMD came in two CPU configurations, a Ryzen 5 Pro 4650U and a Ryzen 7 Pro 4750U. And depending on which one of those you got, it was AMD Radeon Vega 6 or 7 graphics. Now, I'll come back to why that's important in just a moment. The Intel came in a significantly larger amount of CPUs, including the i5-10210U, the i5-10310U, the i7-10510U, i7-10610U, 10710U, and the 10810U. All of those Intel CPUs came with the Intel UHD 620, which, to be honest, was showing its age at that point. And I believe that it is actually that uh, GPU that would lead to the first discrepancy. Now, obviously, you can compare the CPUs and their single-core and multi-core benchmarking and find that there are some interesting conclusions, but I am not a CPU expert, and there are plenty of other videos out there that will go into the nitty-gritties on which is better for which. However, according to Lenovo's own spec sheet, the Intel UHD 620 is able to drive one, obviously it's native display, and two additional monitors. However, the AMD variant can drive its display plus three additional monitors. So, if you are a multi-monitor setup individual, that is something to take into strong consideration. The other thing has to do with the RAM. So on the Intel variant, it is uh, DDR4, 2,666 megahertz, and it is 8, 16, or 32 gigs soldered to the board. Unlike the T480S, which I featured in an earlier video, which I will link right here, starting with the T490S moving forward, all of the S series had soldered RAM. Now, same story over here with the AMD. The principal difference, though, is that it's running DDR4, 3,200 megahertz RAM. 816 or 32 gigabytes soldered. So you actually have higher speed RAM with the AMD variant. In terms of displays, they're mostly the same. So for example, on the Intel, we have a 920 by 1080 250 nit panel, a 920 by 1080 400 nit low power panel, a 920 by 1080 300 nit touch, and then a 920 by 1080 500 nit touch with privacy guard. The same displays were available on the AMD variant with one exception. Intel had a UHD 3840 by 2160 500 nit Dolby Vision display HDR 400. <gasps> <Huh. clears throat> All that being said is that this had a exclusive display on the Intel model. 
A couple of other things to consider is batteries. They both took the same 57 watt hour battery. The Intel model uh, on Mobile Mark 14 scored 21 hours. On Mobile Mark 18, though, it only scored 14.26. So a bit of a discrepancy between those two benchmarks and the results. The AMD didn't do as good, but it was considerably more consistent. So the Mobile Mark 14 for it was 15.9 and the Mobile Mark 2018 was 13.6. So lower, but more consistent. Other things to consider in terms of differences are the port selection. So on the Intel variant, we have USB 3.2 Gen 1, and we also have that on the AMD as well. However, here's where the differences come in. The Intel variant, of course, has USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 1 and 3.2 Gen 2 slash Thunderbolt 3. Of course, Thunderbolt is a Intel technology, so over on the AMD, there is no Thunderbolt 3 connector. Instead, it is two USB Type-C 3.2 Gen 2. To further muddy the waters in terms of port version, the Intel has a 1.4B HDMI, whereas the AMD has a HDMI 2.0. Both do sport a, a micro SD card slot, a headphone microphone combo jack, and I'll show you all those in just a moment. The Intel also had one wireless card available to it, the Wi-Fi 6 AX201 with Bluetooth 5.2 whereas the AMD had four different cards available and all of them sported Bluetooth 5.2. Some options that were on these devices included, but were not necessarily limited to, the Think Shutter was optional, including the Windows Hello IR camera. Privacy Guard was optional, Fingerprint Reader was optional, and the Backlit Keyboard was optional. And on this one, we have a fingerprint reader, but no backlit keyboard. And I am really not surprised because I accidentally nearly placed an order for a device uh, that year that I realized that once I had told it uh, to complete the order that I had not actually selected a backlit keyboard because the backlit keyboard was not set by default. So learn from my lessons, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure that you actually have the backlit keyboard selected. Of course, you can put it in afterwards, but that's a, an expense entirely on you. So, of course, as you can see, we have our USB Type-C for charging, Thunderbolt with the proprietary connector on this one, full-size USB Type-A, HDMI, headphone microphone combo jack, another full-size USB, Kensington lock slot, and a smart card reader if it is installed. And then we have uh, along the back there our tray, for, in this case, a micro SD card. So it's not a quick in and out. You actually have to use the tray there for it to be read. And then, of course, if this was a LTE-enabled model, there would be room for a SIM card in there as well. All right. I know we've spent an awful lot of time going over the specifications and the differences between these two models, the one that I have here and then the AMD variant, but it is really important to understand these two key differences because they're not all the same. With that being said, let's go ahead and open this up by removing the <laughs> limited series of screws that we have on the bottom to see what remains to be serviceable on these models. It is worth pointing out that is your reset hole over here, just in the corner, you can barely see it. Uh, there are some procedures that may require you to stick a paper clip through there or a small pin. All right, that was way snugger <laughs> than what I'm used to, but we got it open. As you can imagine, with a device this thin, there is not a whole lot to really service. Our RAM is entirely soldered on and the only real serviceable components that it would appear that we have is the SSD. The Wi-Fi card on this Intel model is actually soldered to the board. The AMD one, however, is socketed, and it, like I said, you can swap in any of the four uh, approved cards. 
So the T14S is, there's no other way to say it. It would be nice if there was a few more serviceable components, but I can't help but feel that there might have been some uh, internal arrangements to ensure that the Intel and AMD variants were built in such a way to not really create a clear winner and to, I hope, encourage competition between the two vendors. Now we've seen recently with the Z series that AMD has gotten exclusive CPU rights uh, to that first generation. And it'll be interesting to see how the uh, relationship between Lenovo and Intel and Lenovo and AMD will continue. We do obviously have a slot for a uh, wireless WAN card uh, if this machine came equipped with it. Um, but that is really it. You can swap out the SSD and you can swap out the battery. You can obviously replace the keyboard by disassembling the machine further. Same with the trackpad and you can replace the screen and all those other components. But in terms of the actual motherboard, uh, there's a lot of stuff soldered on here. So just keep that in mind if you are picking one of these up on the used market that they do start at around $900 because they aren't quite coming off of warranty yet, at least not the three year business warranties that you normally see. So with that being said, let's go ahead and snap this panel back into place and see what we're looking at in terms of boot times. All right, with everything back together, let's go ahead and open this up and see what we can get for some boot time. So we are looking at good boot times and we are rocking a touch panel, which is pretty neat. So that means that we are going to be looking at a 920 by 1080 300 uh, nit panel with touch because I don't think Privacy Guard is uh, on this particular model. And this is the i5-10210U running 8 gigabytes of RAM. So it's okay. Um, the 8 gigabytes of RAM is a bit on the low side. So if you're doing standard productivity tasks that this is going to be more than enough. Of course, it being a 10th generation Intel, it will run Windows 11 no problem. If you are doing some heavily intensive things, however, you might find eight gigabytes of RAM a little bit lacking. And unlike the T480S, uh, you're not putting any additional RAM in there, dual channel, single channel, or otherwise. So that is one thing to keep in mind when you are looking for these things used is it's essentially a what you see is what you get. You're not going to be upgrading that RAM. Uh, if you're getting the Intel version, that is the Wi-Fi card that you will get because it is soldered on. You don't have the option. If you are needing additional displays beyond two external ones, then the AMD one is of course going to be the way to go. And if RAM speed is a concern of yours, then AMD might also be the way to go. However, if you want that uh, UHD nicer display, it's Intel only. So there's a lot of trade-offs depending on which model of these you go with. And it's actually that reason that the T14S and to some extent the T14 kind of got pushed off to the wayside. I liked the performance figures of the AMD chips during that time, but I, I was having a hard time with the Intel exclusivity on some of the other key features and it didn't appear that there was an overall clear winner and for that reason I actually decided not to get either one and instead picked up the X1 Nano which you can see up here. Now of course that machine is an amazing piece of kit and it wasn't all about power and performance that drew me to that. It was the screen, it was the size, and it was the weight. Uh, the thinness seemed to be a compromise I'd be making regardless of which machine I got, so uh, it just seemed to me like the better choice at the time. That being said, I present this information to you so you can make your own decision, of course, on whether or not you think that the T14S would be a good purchase for you at whatever price point you can find it at. If you do have any questions about the T14S and some of the uh, murkiness of all the different configurations and what's offered, I would encourage you to leave a comment in the comment section down below. If you have a piece of information that you would like to add about the specs and differences between the Intel and AMD model of the T14 or T14S series, 
or if you have personal trigger time on either one, I would love to hear uh, your stories in the comments as well, because the more information we can pull together, the better decisions that the people watching this video will hopefully make. And as always, if you do enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I am going to continue to encourage you to do the big four. Please like the video, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So the next time I have an opportunity to talk about a TS model, you'll be the first to know about it. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.